Hey guys, happy Sunday morning. I'm doing another interview today with an amazing friend named Dina. And we're gonna talk about how she's broken through some plateaus. I love sharing people's stories, it's so fun. So I'm gonna wait for her to hop on. Let's see. Dina, bring her on to the camera at Dina. Yay! Okay, adding, let's see. Okay, okay. Connecting. Her? There she is. <laughs> How's That's it going? So weird. Good. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Oh. So I, I can't find my little tripod. Oh, yeah. It's so annoying. So I have to, oh, but whatever. I know. I, mine's currently balanced up against like a pint glass. Because <laughs> Hunter uh, broke my tripod, so we're good. Awesome. Uh, well, happy Sunday. Have you had a good weekend so far? I can't yeah, hear you. We are having a good Oh, okay. now I can hear you. Yeah, now I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, yeah we're having a good weekend. It's awesome. nice weather here. Oh, good. You're, so she's on the East Coast. I'm on the West Coast, but we're still, uh, we, we actually are getting tons of sun, so can't can't go wrong with that. I love it. I love it. No, so definitely. I wanted to bring Dina on because Dina and I have, we knew each other and uh, coached together um, in our previous organization. And then we both fell in love with ketones. And I mean, we're like obsessed. We have like all of them. We buy them all and we keep them all. And <laughs> You're lucky if we share them with you. Um, yep. But so I just wanted to bring her on and share um, some amazing testimonials from her about how she's broken through some plateaus. So I'll let you kind of take it away. Maybe your backstory a little bit, what you've done in the past and like what has changed. Yeah. So probably about three, three and a half years ago, um, which, you know, three years ago, I had sort of a need to get my health and wellness back because I had just had my son and I needed to lose some weight. So that's when I really kind of took control of things, um, started, you know, back with Beachbody, doing programs, drinking Shakeology, all that good stuff. And then I was really, really, when I got passionate about health and wellness and said, I want to do this thing. I want to sort of help other people mm -hmm. and I actually took it a step further outside of Beachbody and went to the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. Oh, awesome. And got, yeah, I got certified as a health coach just because I wanted to, well, more importantly, that was an awesome program to get certified, but the depth and breadth of the knowledge that they give to you and just the people you meet, that was sort of intriguing to me. So I had, you know, definitely started eating healthier, started exercising more regularly, and, you know, toying around with new foods and figuring out what works for my body. And I lost weight. I did. I lost um, a good amount of weight that I had put on after my pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And I was doing that for a while, but I was really stuck at a plateau. And I was doing the, so uh, I'm people like fast forward to maybe November of last year, December of last year. I was just trying to break through that plateau. So, mm -hmm. Okay, try a different program. Okay, try, but still following nutrition um, plans, still following the fitness program and mm -hmm. eating healthy, and it just wasn't working. Mm -hmm. So I did start working with a functional medicine doctor mm. because I found out, you know, hormonally all that stuff was out of whack. Which yeah. Was so upsetting. Um, and found out that I had some food sensitivity issues. And I did, you know, I made some changes to my diet from there, and, but I still wasn't breaking through that. Yeah. So I was following you on Facebook. <laughs> I was stalking you, as I like to say. I love it. <laughs> what are you doing? What is this thing that she's doing? Yeah. So then I reached out and we talked a little bit and then I tried the 10 day. And you probably, you probably remember, but I did the 10 day and then I, I love the ketones. I love the way I feel. So in the first three days, I noticed the energy right away mm -hmm. and I noticed the app. Yeah. That was huge. And I, but not, um, 
people always say, oh, so you're not eating. No, it wasn't that you weren't eating. It was just, you didn't feel hungry or like you had to snack every two hours or yes. something like that. It was like a nice, a nice appetite suppressant feeling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then I didn't move forward initially, mm-hmm. but like two to three weeks later, I was missing that energy and that feeling of, mm-hmm. of just being satiated, Yeah, I guess is what it was. For sure. And that's when, we, yeah, and that's when we got on the call, I think with like Jody and Sharon, yeah. and you guys kind of threw everything. And first of all, I don't want to say, you know, you're selling, but you sold me on <laughs> ketones, right? So yeah. getting ketones back in my, but also being part of this broader community because I do work full time. You know, I, I love my full time job, but I'm so passionate about this health and wellness stuff and being able to help people I think with ketones is an even greater scale than just a defined nutrition and fitness program. This is and more I, than a hundred percent. And what you said about the appetite suppression, I think is key because a lot of research is coming out saying, um, it's not about necessarily what you eat. It's about the timing of what you eat it. So like to not be eating from like the second you wake up to the second you go to bed, but to eat between eight and 12 hours or, you know, some, shorter period of time is really more beneficial for the body. And that's what I learned like right off the bat with ketones is the appetite suppression wasn't stopping me from eating all day, but it was allowing me to manage that gap and be comfortable. Like I still have three meals a day, but I wasn't right. snacking all the way through. I wasn't eating from the, like I was the person who woke up and with, if I didn't have breakfast within five minutes, like it was, I was not a nice person. So like ketones were (laughs) like, I could go till like noon and then have my first meal. And that was something that was so out of my wheelhouse and definitely not, I've never experienced that before ever. And then the other thing about it is like, you know, I found the same. So I started drinking ketones and used intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. And that I thought, oh, I'm just going to be starving. Yeah. Why would I be doing, why would I, no, you're not starving. Yeah. And I think the key to get you through, and you're right. I mean, I'm still having three meals a day too, but I'm getting them in in a shorter period of time and then allowing my body to get into that state of ketosis, Yeah, which is exactly. helpful. Exactly. And so, you know, with the exogenous ketones or therapeutic ketones, like, your body is still producing its own ketones too because of that appetite suppression. Like we're in ketosis at night. And then in that, you know, as we're basically fasting from breakfast is really when you break the fast of the evening. And so if we're able to keep that breakfast fast going for a little bit longer, our body's producing its own ketones. It's tapping into its own fat stores. And so it was just amazing to be able to actually see that happening And, and, and I, people, I tried intermittent fasting a long time ago and I was like, oh, this is such will, I can't do it. It's all willpower, you know? And for me, it was, I was like, I'm not willing to go down that, like beat myself up if I don't make it till 10 AM or something like that. But with ketones, it was so simple that I would be like, oh, I haven't, oh, it's lunch. Okay. I should have, I should have breakfast. You know what I mean? So that it was amazing to feel that freedom from, from the mental situation with food like food to me is a lot of mental and you know all of that like ah it's noon I don't know should you eat Uh, you know like all that because like we've had (laughs) structured nutrition plans for from what I can remember you know so to have freedom from that was really cool yeah I agree with that and then what I naturally noticed is I think I started uh, full-time on ketones in Mm mid-February And so that also introduced intermittent fasting just kind of naturally. Yeah. And I able I was able to break through that plateau and then That's awesome. By April I was down nine pounds. Yeah. And you weren't doing anything crazy. I really wasn't. I mean I was doing I you know, I exercising less. Mm-hmm. Not feeling the pressure of it, right? I'm enjoying so if I want to do a walk or my yoga or something, you know, cardio like I'm not sort of I don't guess bound by a program yes and I'm still losing weight and feeling good and energized yeah. so that's huge. a huge point too I mean 
as a personal trainer, people, a lot of my clients, a lot of people come to me for advice and people, um, often are, you know, they're like, I work out, I'm working out six days a week. I'm doing between 45 minutes and an hour. And it's that I have to be always in the gym. I have to always be following a program. I have to always be doing this. And I was in that, you know, I, I had after Hunter in December, uh, he was about nine, nine and a half months old. And I was like, well, I guess this is just what my body looks like because I was killing myself with programs. I was working out all the time, even with a broken ankle, I was still trying to do workouts because I was like, I was, I was so in the mentality of if I don't work out, that's going to be the reason why I don't move past my plateaus. You know what I mean? So it was all right. tied into that. Like you have to keep working out. And it did take a, away some of the joy of working out. Like I love working out. I love I'm, like feeling strong, but when it's like the guilt and the pressure of not completing a program or missing a day or blah, 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 that really went away with ketones because uh, it just brought the, it just brought the fun back because I was still making progress and I could do different workouts and I could do workouts that felt good. You know what I mean? So totally yeah. agree with you on that. Yeah. And I think it was a hard transition too, because of whatever the last three years, it was so regimented. Mm -hmm. And I, I honestly did feel bad. Yeah. The first weeks of not doing something every single solitary day or working out as hard. And, and then I got to the point where I said, well, why? Yeah. I feel good. I'm losing weight. Yeah. I feel like I just don't feel bad. You're, you're doing what's right for your body. Yeah. Everybody, it's this weird transition. Yeah. <laughs> very weird because it's so ingrained you know it's so ingrained in our culture too like to get your sweat on every day and blah blah blah. and it's like well I still move every day like trust there's still workouts happening I'm deadlifting a kid all day long but that traditional you know working out like pressing play or going to the gym it that pressure went away and I could just enjoy it I totally agree with you on that so you've brought, you've gone past your plateau. Are what are you still feeling now? Tell me, tell us about like, you've moved past that plateau. What was, what was the feeling like when you saw that you had passed that barrier that you thought you were stuck at? I mean, I was so excited. I yeah. couldn't, I honestly like, oh my God, this is helping me to yeah. achieve some weight loss goals. But the, the thing that I still feel mm -hmm. now with the, when I started is that um, feeling of sustained energy, first mm -hmm. of all, is awesome. Not having that 3 p.m. slump where I'm running for a coffee. And I do like coffee. So sometimes I do drink coffee at three o'clock, but it's always decaf. Yeah. I just, I like the ritual of that sometimes, but I don't need it as a pick me up. Right. Um, awesome. And then I definitely sleep mm -hmm. a lot better. Yeah. That happened. I noticed that. You know, I've heard you say in many videos, this isn't a quick fix. And I think compounded over time, the benefits just keep coming. So sleep is huge. Yeah. And then the bloating. Mm. A lot of people that have inflammation al along the midsection, yeah. um, my functional medicine doctor noticed it right away. Mm. When I saw her, I think four weeks after I had started on ketones. Really? She's like, you're a lot smaller in that midsection area and I was like I know I do I'm I feel a lot less bloated and so there was a lot going on that's amazing but Gina, I, Gina said something very similar she was like it felt like somebody poked me with a pin and I just started going <laughs> she's like called it the balloon yeah. effect she was like I just felt like all this air and bloat that was in my I mean it's not air but just like all this was just going away and it just felt freeing and we all know that discomfort of bloat and where you're like what is this you know and you're like this shouldn't be here and it's and it's just it's amazing to watch that inflammation leave your system right it and is crazy like if I if I miss a ketone um for whatever reason I, I think I missed two when I was traveling um and I noticed creaking and my joints coming back I noticed like the things it was it was crazy like immediately I was like oh like my back is sore you know what I mean and my back was one of the biggest things that um when I started drinking ketones on a regular basis all the pain in my back went away and mm -hmm. when I had when I missed it I was like oh 
gosh, that rib is hurting again. And it was, it was crazy to see that, to, to see that happen. That's kind of amazing. The research behind this is really yeah. so inspiring and just I mean, just what they find out that ketones are actually doing from a health perspective yes. is really powerful. That's a Very huge powerful. draw for me and a huge draw for, for a couple of my clients too. Yeah. There have been a couple of clients that had some symptoms of, you know, going through some medical things and they were having symptoms and by taking ketones, one of them is even like, I got my back because I just feel so energized and great taking ketones. I mean, that's just unbelievable. It is. And, and that's kind of why I love doing these. That's a big reason why I love doing these lives and why I love interviewing so many different people is because we're getting like a very big um, breadth of like experiences. And when I was at Keto Academy and more, there were people coming up to the stage and thanking the CEO who had life debilitating diseases who thought like, I'm just going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life and I'm just going to be a vegetable. And they were thanking him saying, I started drinking therapeutic ketones a year ago and I have my speech back. I have my, like, I can walk again. I don't have my spine is, you know, like all these different things. And I was like, I mean, we were ugly crying and it was, it was so inspirational. Um, and we're not here to make medical claims and say that we're, we could heal everything. But at the same time, it is so fascinating to see these scientists have been spending decades of their lives trying to bring this research to light. And then now we have a vehicle to do that. And they're beyond, like, there were some scientists who were like over the moon. They're like, this community is reaching so many more people than my study could ever reach, you know, and just be like, being able to bring, you know, research about type two diabetes. Like they were talking about um, the ketogenic diet. This doctor had a study of 400 type two diabetics um, and they followed just the ketogenic diet. 83% of them stayed on the study, which is an amazing amount of people to stay on. And it was, the percentage was in the nineties that they either eliminated or dramatically reduced their insulin. Like, oh my God, just by following the ketogenic diet. And it just goes to think, you're like, wow, like they were in a state of ketosis and therapeutic ketones put you in that state of ketosis. I mean, it's just, it's amazing to see this research coming out. They're doing a study with our product right now um, with Alzheimer's patients. Um, and they're noticing like cognition and memory and all this stuff because they're finding that ketones aren't just fuel, but they're cell signalers. Um, and they're learning that the thing that is happening in Alzheimer's patients' brains is their brain stops signaling for fuel. It's not that there's plaque in the brain or the cell gateways are dead. They just stop signaling for fuel. So glucose doesn't get up to their brain, but because ketones are cell signalers, they can ask for ketones and even in the presence of glucose in the body they can still fuel the brain so it's been cra it was crazy to hear all this stuff um it's just an amazing you know it all the whole ketogenic diet started with a guy who wanted to help i think his daughter with epilepsy um, yes and so it was you know that's how it all started and it's just amazing to see they they kept calling ketones um our ancient molecule that they're the molecule that we've had since the beginning of time, we just, and we've always been in a state of ketosis um, through decades and decades and centuries. Um, we just, it, since the American revolution, or excuse me, since the agriculture revolution, we've changed that. Yeah. But before that, butter was totally normal. Cream was totally normal. This was a part of our mainstay. And it was just, it's all changed when soy and wheat and all this got like dumped into our system and sugar. Well, that's the other thing. The sugar thing really is eye opening once you start reading about all the impacts that sugar has on your body. But the other thing that's crazy is that all these years, I don't know, the last 15, probably 20 years, we've been told don't eat high fat foods, mm -hmm. don't eat things, you know, sugar, use all the sugar substitutes and yeah. all of that. It's, kind of flipped on its head with the ketogenic diet because you're eating high fat, healthy fats. I'm not yeah. saying, you know, yeah. you're eating for your body, but that also putting you in that state of ketosis and keeping your insulin sort of level, yeah. you're having those ups and downs and you're yeah. where you're crashing and you need 
Wait, I lost you a little bit. Yeah, exactly. It's it's amazing, you know. And the, one of the studies, uh, I'll just put this last one out there, but they uh, they were talking about heart attacks and fat, and they were saying that actually people, um, people, I think they said people with lower. Oh gosh, I don't want to flub the study. Um, I won't. I'm not going to say that one because I don't want to mess up the study. But uh, it what they also talked about. Um, countries with obesity rate and high fat diets and france apparently is the the country that has they basically most of their meal is like animal fat it's like butters animal fats meats all this stuff and they have a nine percent obesity rate and we as americans eat the most low fat we eat the most like i mean substitute fat free all this stuff and we have the highest obesity rate and you're like hmm. it's me yeah yeah, so interesting. Makes you think. So that's awesome. So and the, go ahead. Oh no, you go. You go. Um, so I was just gonna say, so so you've broken through plateau, and you're still on this journey. You still are. You're still. I think you said you still have like a couple more pounds you want to lose or whatever. But you, are you? How are yeah. things going with you on that right now? How are you feeling there? I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, I think so. I lost the nut. Actually, it's down ten. I'm down 10. No. So I want to lose another 10, but I am happy to do that slowly. Um, and then what I noticed, I think you mentioned this before, is I'm actually rebooting starting tonight. Nice. I'm doing it a little earlier. Yeah. But the last time I booted was two months ago, and I lost three pounds doing mm -hmm. reboot. And then I never gained those back, even yeah. though I went back to my normal eating pattern. So I think that that's helping me too. Yeah. So just for resetting metabolism. So I'm looking forward to consistent reboots, which will be, I think, beneficial. Yeah. And then focusing in on much, um, I'm moving more towards that ketogenic diet. I don't, people always ask me that. Do you eat, you don't, oh, so you don't eat carbs anymore? Well, first of all, I do eat carbs, but I am gluten, dairy, and egg free for health reasons per wow. my functional medicine doctor. So right. It's not, not because I'm avoiding foods. I, I got sure. tested. Um, I stay away from the, but I still eat potato and I eat rice and, you know, but I'm able to balance my diet accordingly and figure out what works for me and not feel deprived, yeah. yet still lose weight. It's kind of, I've never felt like that before. Yeah. I always, I was missing out or trying to, honestly do, do a kind of a quick fix thing. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like I'm eating for life. <laughs> that's awesome. Insane, you know, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's actually a really interesting way of putting it. Cause I feel like every plan in previous company that I was with and you and I were both with, I feel like every plan I was like, okay, this is going to be the one that gets me to the goal that I want, whether it was 21 days, whether it was a three day thing or 60 day thing. 21 days is pretty quick. You know, mm -hmm. 60 days is pretty quick. And I would expect like, this is going to be the thing. And then once I hit those, that, then, then I'm good. Do you know what I mean? And now yeah. it's just like, I, I'm just moving through life without that expectation, which is amazing. Right. I think that, I think that's a big differentiator is like, there's a reason why people continue to take before and after pictures. Because like, and, and, and Shalene Johnson talks about this on a regular basis. It's like, if you're, if you're constantly taking before and after pictures, you kind of have to rethink, why am I having to start over every single time? Like, I, I, I love the fact that I'm not starting over anymore at all, ever. It's so cool. Nope. I'm refusing to start over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. love that. It's such a freeing feeling. It's so cool. Yeah, I agree. That's awesome. Well, do you have any final parting words of wisdom? Um, I'm so proud of you. This is so cool. Like, uh, it's just amazing to see life changes that are just so subtle, but like making such a big impact, you know? Yeah, I think the only thing I would say, and I, this is what I tell people that sort of ask me about ketones that seem sort of hesitant or, or what, I mean, I was skeptical about this. I 
was really committed to doing my program, working out, eating, you know, a healthy uh, regimented diet, following that nutrition plan. And, but I was sort of scared to break out and do something different. Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of reasons, fear of, you know, being chastised by others, Mm -hmm. but also, okay, is this really going to work kind of thing? Yeah. Um, I think you just, you have to try something and see if it works for you. Yeah. But the best part about ketones is they have such a wide range of benefits. It's not just for weight loss. That's what I tell people. I mean, great. If you're trying to lose weight, this will help you. Right. I do. I truly believe that. But there's so much more that comes with it. So don't be afraid. Yeah. To take the step and try. Yeah. Because it it's be my- literally will help you break down fat. <laughs> Like right. if you, if you have fat, it will help you break it down. Like, yep. end of story. So, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much my, my word with them is to, to take a chance. Awesome. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday with your family. I so appreciate you hopping on. I love hearing your progress and your successes. It's so cool. I'm so happy to be doing this with you. Thanks, Becky. I appreciate it. I'll talk right. to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.